Hello, uh, this is Tony Baez Jenis commenting on the article uh, Aging and Heart Rate in Heart Failure Clinical Implications for Long Term Mortality appearing in this issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. I am here on behalf of my co authors, which in order are Josep Lupon, Mar Domingo, Marta Antonio, Elizabeth Zamora, Xavier Santas Massas, Crisanto Diez, Salvador Altimir, Maribel Troya, and Paloma Gastelorutia. What are we going to talk today is the influence of heart rate in heart failure on long-term mortality. It is well known that as we reduce heart rate, mortality goes down. What we don't know yet is whether this benefit is the same in younger people and in older people. So the aim of our study was to evaluate in a chronic cohort of ambulatory heart failure patients whether there is a different threshold of risk of heart failure for patients below 75 years of age and those above 75 years of age. This is a unicenter study that evaluated consecutive heart failure patients, 1,033 ambulatory heart failure patients between 2001 and 2012. This is a conventional heart failure cohort with a mean age of 65 years. 60% 60 of these patients were ischemic in origin. There was a majority of male patients and treatment was according guidelines. Let me point out that this study was performed only in sinus rhythm patients. During a mean follow-up of 4.6 plus minus 3.3 .3 years, 476 patients died. Mortality was associated with a significantly greater heart rate in the total cohort, with a hazard ratio of 1.18. From a clinical perspective, this means that for every 10 bits we increase the heart rate. There is an 18% increased risk of mortality and this is very relevant. If we explore this analysis in a multivariate way, the results remain the same. Let's see quintiles. Survival curves according to heart rate quintiles show the following as is seen in this figure. Quintile number one are patients with less than 60 bits per minute. Quintile two, 60 to 67 bits per minute. Quintile three, 68 to 73 bits per minute. Quintile four, 74 to 82 bits per minute. Quintile five, 83 bits per minute or higher. On your left, you can see the total cohort of 1,033 patients and the best survival was clearly observed in patients in the first quintile. On your right, in patients 75 years and older, the best survival was observed in patients in the third quintile, which is that between 68 and 73 bits per minute. Once we found this data, we decided to see spline risk estimates and as shown in this figure, smooth spline risk estimates according to age strata and heart rate are plotted here. On your left, in patients below 75 years of age, there is a reduction in smooth spline risk estimates as heart rate goes down. On your right, in patients with more than 75 years, the smooth spline risk estimates show a U-shaped morphology. Finally, as we see in figure number three appearing in the manuscript, we evaluated hazard ratios for death 
for any cause according to age, strata and heart rate. This graph shows associations by plotting the hazard ratio versus the reference point, which is indicated by the diamonds at 60 bits per minute in patients younger than 75 years and at 78 bits per minute in patients 75 years and older. As it is clearly shown in this figure, in younger patients below 75 years of age, the aim of achieving lower heart rate is positive because the lower the heart rate, the lower the hazard ratio. By contrast, and this is the main finding of our study, in older people, the U-shaped has an adhere at 68 beats per minute. Below 68 beats per minute, the ratio or the risk of death increases and above 68 beats per minute, the risk of death also increases. So our aim as clinicians should be to obtain the lowest heart rate for our younger patients, the lower the better. By contrast, as clinicians, we have to be aware that in elderly people, 75 years of age or older, we should target our heart rate in the vicinity of 68 beats per minute. Because if we go very much lower, we are putting our patient at a higher risk, as well as if we target it to a, a very high heart rate. In summary, young patients with heart failure in sinus rhythm should have a low heart rate, the lower the better. Even if it's lower than 60 bit per minute, it's okay, the lower the better. In older patients with heart failure in sinus rhythm, our aim as clinicians should be to attain a heart rate in the vicinity of 68 bits per minute. Thank you very much. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.